Welcome back to Once Upon a Shredder. My name is Lance Seconato. Today's review is of the Kaizen. This is number 29 of 75. I don't know what the real serial number is, but to me, it's 29 of 75. And it's a very nice guitar. I can give you a very brief overview of what I think of the guitar. It's very solidly built. It's well-engineered, plays great, very resonant, much lighter weight than I expected, much thinner than I expected, and a couple surprises, pleasant surprises for me. One of them is the Steinberger Design Tuners that have basically their knurled knobs that stick off the back of the headstock instead of across the top like normal tuners would be. And they're very tight to turn. Very nice though. The fretboard is nice and flat, though I'm not necessarily a super flat fretboard guy. My sort of sweet spot is kind of 10 inch radius, 10 to 12 inch radius personally, but it's still very nice. The fanned frets are not too extreme <laughs> from my perspective. Uh, I have only have two guitars that have fanned frets, this one and a Schecter prototype. It's a nine string Damien that I got off from Reverb some years ago that I absolutely love. It has EMGs, just a gorgeous guitar. It also has fan frets. So I'm a little bit used to fan frets, so I don't play fan fret guitars all the time, but it's very nice. Reminds me of that Damien. Uh, as I said earlier, it's very resonant. Hit a, hit a chord and it just resonates for a long time. So it, for such a lightweight guitar, not that lightweight guitars can't be resonant, but in my mind, I'm still stuck with this notion that a heavier guitar resonates longer. And I know that's actually not true, but it resonates really long. It's very nice, has a great tonality. <laughs> I'm running this through my Axe FX3 Mark II on a setting that is derived from a Tremolo Deluxe Reverb type patch. The, reverb, the delay that I have on this right now is a delay that I crafted to try to mimic my beloved Keeley Halo pedal. So that's what you hear backing me right now. In a minute, I'll turn the delay part of this off. I have just the dry version of that same patch or one of the scenes within that patch is, is dry. One of the things that really strikes me about this guitar, other than its looks, it's a gorgeous guitar, very futuristic, sort of strange looking, very nicely contoured, very well thought out contour wise, the way it fits against the body, the, the way it's contoured on the top for my arm. But the thing that strikes me the most about this guitar, the one huge standout is the variety of tones I can get from a guitar that has only two humbucker pickups and a three position toggle switch. Let me go ahead and put it on the dry patch. I just love listening to those chords ring out because there's a lot of harmonic content there. The pickups are very nice. I don't think I'm necessarily sold on Ernie Ball Music Man's marketing about HT, the HT part of their pickups. I can't tell whether that's sort of BS or whether that's for real. Not that they're lying. I'm sure they heat treat something. They say they heat treat the pole pieces, but whether or not cooking magnets makes a difference, I guess that's up to you. I will say that that line of pickups, this uh, the bridge position pickup, it's true, I'm not actually playing the bridge position pickup right now, I'm on the neck position pickup. Still, the bridge position pickup is fantastic. I'll get to that in a minute. So it has two pickups. It has a mini humbucker in the neck position, which I'm on right now. Very nice, it's warm, it's full, harmonically rich content, has a nice top end. <laughs> You can see how it's it's clear and it is still warm, like a bridge position, or I'm sorry, a neck position pickup. You're not gonna hear any show-offy stuff now. It's just gonna be sloppy garbage. But I want you to hear the sound, the, the sounds of the guitar, the tonality of the guitar, the harmonic richness. And for that, I've chosen primarily just clean patches. So let's go through some of the sounds. <laughs> nice just really nice sound i really like it so that's the neck position pickup let's put it let's uh go to the middle position
It's very scooped in the middle. It's a nice, almost surf kind of sound. I'm not sure if I would call it a strat sound necessarily, or even like a telly sound, but it has a really nice sort of scooped. I just say surf because I don't really, I'm not really a surf fan per se, and I'm not really well versed in surf, surf music, but it just has a really nice sort of chimey sound to it. In fact, let me go ahead and sort of noodle around in a lead type stuff so you can get a better idea between the neck position and the middle position, what it sounds like. I'll just noodle around here a little bit. <laughs> neck let's go middle see how different this sounds So that's the middle position. So you can see that's a huge difference in tonality. All right, that's me switching back and forth between the neck and middle position. Really, really great variety of tones just between those two. Now let's go to the bridge. And again, this is clean, so you're going to hear all that fat middle range that you expect to hear from a bridge position pickup. That's kind of the point. It's really nice and fat and a little bit of bite to it, Ben. <laughs> So a great variety of tones from this guitar, which, I mean, what more do you want from a guitar that has only a, a three position toggle switch and two humbuckers? Huge variety. So I would say among the guitars that I have that are two humbuckers, three position toggle switch, this one has the greatest variety of tones, hands down. I love my other guitars. I have two Les Pauls. I have a bunch of Jupiter, uh, or I have a bunch of Harmony Jupiter guitars, modern Harmony Jupiter guitars two humbucker, three position toggle switch. This one, by far, the difference between all those positions, those three positions, is the greatest. So, from that perspective, it's, it has greater variety of tones. I love that. Is it worth $4,000? Yeah, it depends on your perspective, right? I don't know. It's kind of like buying a car that's too expensive. After you bought it, you feel like, well, I better make use of it now. <laughs> now that I've uh, put out the money for it. I won't sell it. This guitar, I won't sell it because it's a—it's not one of a kind. It's 29 of 75, so it's obviously not one of a kind, but it's a unique instrument with a lot of unique features, and I will hang on to it for that reason. It's a very light guitar. I would happily gig with it. I might not gig with it if I'm gigging in an area that I would be afraid of an instrument walking out the door with a human that isn't me, but otherwise, if I was gigging in a place that I had pretty high confidence that I'd be fine with, I would, in a minute, I would definitely gig with this guitar because of how light it is, how comfortable it is, and the variety of tones. What do I think about some of the technical specs? All right, so it is a, in the, on the high E side of the fretboard, it is 24 and three quarters. That's Les Paul scale. At the E string, the scale length is 25.5, which is Strat scale length. And on the B string, or on the seventh string anyway, you might tune the B string to a different note. Uh, that scale length is 
inches. So just slightly longer than strat scale length. I find it to be comfortable. I don't really have any complaints. My sweet spot is 25 inch scale length. So this compared to my ideal of a perfect guitar, this is very good. I wouldn't call it perfect because in order to be perfect, it would have to have a Floyd Rose. This doesn't have a Floyd Rose. It doesn't even have a floating trim. It's got this dive bomb only type, um, I say trim, I really mean vibrato because technically it's a vibrato, not a tremolo. So this one right here is dive bomb only and I have zero use for a dive bomb only vibrato bridge. So I took the arm out, I'm not using it. I will never use it that capacity. Thus, it is not a perfect guitar. The fan frets I could do with or without. Uh, I know why they did it, because that way they could make it multi-scale. And there's some value to having a multi-scale guitar because the low notes are tighter, generally speaking. Like the low E string on a Strat tends to have a sort of a tighter vibe to it than the low E note on a, on a Les Paul. It's pretty much accepted science regarding guitars. So that this guitar benefits from that as well. Really nice in more metal kind of scenarios. The, uh, the feel of the neck is really nice. It's not an overly thin neck, and it's also not a, 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 a thick neck. It's not like a, a chunky neck. So it feels very comfortable to me. I think they thought this out really well. I think they seem to have gone over this guitar with a fine tooth comb. They seem to have checked all the boxes, or most of the boxes anyway from my perspective on what I consider a really great guitar. The uh, tuners, I think, are special. I wouldn't mind having to, like, these tuners on other guitars as well. I haven't changed the strings on the guitar, so I can't really comment about how easy it is to do it on the front, but I've read that it's very easy. It's just a matter of, like, you tune the, turn the little knobby thing here, you pull the old string out, right, when you, you go to put new strings in, you, you put it down, turn it, and it's locked in. The back, the knurled knobs are where you actually do the tuning. I could see somebody looking at this for the first time going like, well, that's awkward, I have to turn this to tune it, but that's not really how it works. These little tuner looking knobs are actually what you turn to lock the string into its little, I don't know what that's called, little well. And then the knurled knobs on the back are the ones you actually turn to tune your guitar. And they work great. Like I said, I think they're direct drive, one to one ratio. So they have a, a stiffness to them but I don't feel like I accidentally over adjust at any point. It just feels like it's just right. It's well thought out. And Ned Steinberger, come on, he's like an engineering genius pretty much when it comes to guitar stuff. You got to give him props. The guy is, uh, he just keeps on going and he keeps making cool things. What else? The finish is great. The finish is kind of a sort of a shimmer finish where it, it's a little bit spectral. Depending on what light you have it in, it might look purpley kind of. It might look slightly blue but mostly it's a gray with essentially metallic flakes in it. The back of the guitar has the Tobin Abbasi signature, which I just have to assume is the real signature. I, I, they probably wouldn't have cheaped out on 75 guitars. I'm sure it's his real signature. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with whether I'm going to try to, I don't know. I don't want to wear off the signature, but I'm also not like a guitar museum collector kind of person. I try to use all the guitars that I have. So I plan on using this practically, but I have considered what to do to protect that signature so that it doesn't rub off over time. Thankfully, it's far enough over. Yeah, that's not really a good excuse. I was gonna say it's far enough over where I wouldn't rub it off, but that's kind of wishful. There's a good chance that if I played this very often, it would probably eventually wear off. So maybe I'll put a coating of something over it. I don't know what I'll do. I'll figure it out. Maybe a clear, a clear plastic thing over top of it that I could peel off at a later time. Uh, I don't know. Any ideas, put them in the comment section. <laughs> the, the metal capacity of it, the, the metal making capacity of it, making metal music, I think it's great. Um, if, you, if that's mainly what you're looking at this guitar for, it, it'll do that with a plume. I think you will have a lot of fun crafting really nice metal, and you can down tune this to wherever you want to. I generally, I generally have this tuned down to an A instead of the normal stock B, yeah, that was a little more fun for me to come up with a song and craft it around in A tuning. And I'll play that. That's the video that you'll hear at the end. But I'm trying to think if there's anything else I've left out. Price tag, right? Price tag is really huge, but this was number 29 of 75. Not that I got to pick which one I got. I simply placed my order and of course I got whatever one was left of the 75. They're not selling like hotcakes. Last I looked, which was probably last weekend, they had something like, 
I don't know, I think it was like 35 of them left. So they're not selling super fast, but it's an expensive guitar. And you know, what can you say? It's a guitar nobody's probably touched. They don't know how it feels and plays. And there are a lot of guitarists out there, unlike me, who buy guitars all the time that I've never touched or played. There are plenty of people out there who just don't feel comfortable doing that. I have friends. I mean, for example, I have two friends who would never buy a guitar that they had never actually touched. So I can understand. The uh, roasted maple neck is nice. I don't really have any strong opinions about whether roasting makes any difference. Uh, it doesn't really make any difference to me personally. It looks nice. I like the dark color of it, assuming that the darkness is truly not a stain and it is because of the roasting. What else? Really, I think that's it. It's very comfortable. It's a ridiculously comfortable guitar to play. I, like I said, I would, in a heartbeat, I would gig with this guitar. <laughs> So it's a great guitar. I love it. It's good. It'll be it'll make uh, for great music in the studio and Would I buy the black one? Probably not. I think one of these is enough for me. It was a lot of money to lay out I financed it just full disclosure. I financed it over 12 months uh, Because it was too much money to lay out all at once and I was curious right it was it was kind of a gas purchase Right just being honest with you but I don't regret having bought it. I'm gonna make good use out of it, like I said, and I will very likely gig with it if I can get my gigging thing back going, which I'd like to gig in the area here in, in Maryland where I live. I'd like to get my solo act thing going again, which I had attempted to do before COVID. And this is a strong candidate for me to be gigging with just because it's so comfortable. It has such a great variety of tones and it's a really nice guitar. So, all right, thanks so much for showing up. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel and you like what you see, even mildly, please subscribe and please hit the like button and also turn on notifications so that you can be notified when I have a new video out, if you're interested. And here is the video I put together for the, the what I called the Kaizen song for this lovely guitar. And I hope you enjoy. Thanks. <laughs>